Did you know that we already have many examples of alternatives to prison? Here are five that are already working to reduce crime, increase community safety, and address the conditions that result in people going to prison. Community-based sentences. There are many people serving criminal sentences in the community through probation, parole, or community supervision. This means individuals spend their criminal sentences out of prisons and in their own homes or community-based residential facilities, sometimes called halfway houses, with supervision. By supervision, we do not mean policing or surveillance. Surveillance does not allow people to develop accountability and does not treat people with respect and autonomy. We must ensure that supervision in communities is by communities and not another form of prison or policing. Currently, most supervision in the community is done by parole officers or probation officers. We could invest a lot more in these people, making them less like police and more like social workers. Halfway houses are a proven means to support, supervise and assist reintegration. They provide an economical and effective alternative to prison. Restorative justice. Restorative justice offers all parties to a crime the opportunity to talk openly about what happened. This includes the individual that committed the harm and the people they hurt, victims. It can also involve family and community members. Restorative justice has been thoroughly studied and proven to be positive for both the individual that committed the harm and the people that were hurt. It is also proven to lower repeat crimes, sometimes referred to as recidivism. Restorative justice can be a powerful way to promote healing. It often offers hurt people with closure and answers about what happened. In Atlantic Canada, prioritizing restorative justice services for youth has reduced repeat offenses and youth incarceration, while increasing positive outcomes. Education, Employment and Training Instead of sending people to sit idle in prisons, what if we created better education, employment and training opportunities? Community service already exists, but we need more resources and dedicated programs that give individuals real skills they can use in their communities. This also requires that criminal records be dismissed or only used in very serious situations. Criminal records prevent many individuals from using in the real world the skills and education they earned during their sentences. This restarts the cycle of poverty. Instead, we should provide people with education and employment opportunities for meaningful work and a positive, productive and engaged life in the community. Addiction and Mental Health Services When the cause of criminalized behavior is rooted in addiction or mental illness, the solution should be addiction services and mental health treatment. Prison can increase the effects of addiction and mental illness, and prison staff are not trained medical professionals. Treatment should always be provided by trained medical professionals not police or correctional staff. There are many types of drug or mental health treatments that prioritize medical and social services for people whose harmful behavior comes from drug addiction or mental illness. Treatment to address addiction and mental illness is proven to have a positive effect on individuals, decreasing their involvement in criminal behavior and increasing their ability to build safe, positive lifestyles. Healing Lodges Healing Lodges are currently used by Indigenous people in the justice system. 
By connecting to indigenous cultures, values, traditions, and beliefs, indigenous people who have been involved in criminalized behavior can heal from their own trauma and shift their lives in a holistic way. At Healing Lodges, individuals can benefit from the guidance and support of indigenous elders during the healing process. Dedicated healing lodges must be available and prioritized for indigenous people. We can look to healing lodges as excellent models for an alternative to prison for everyone. Similar to restorative justice, the healing lodge model provides opportunities for acknowledging harm by the individual, learning about how their lives have led them to cause harm, and approaching rehabilitation and recovery in a holistic way. Healing Lodges can show us how, for best results, a response to crime can and should be holistic, promoting physical, emotional, and spiritual levels of well-being. But what about the dangerous few? The overwhelming majority of people who go to prison are not dangerous. However, there are the dangerous few, in the words of the celebrated Quaker prison abolitionist Ruth Morris, these are the very few individuals who do need to be separated from society for safety reasons. That can be done in ways that do not rely on prisons as we see them now. Prisons can harm people and the incarcerated often leave in worse condition than when they entered. Currently, most people who spend time in prison will be released into our communities without supports, without healing or safe futures. We can consider examples like the Halden prison in Norway for how we might remove people from our societies, but still treat them with dignity and respect and provide them with ways to contribute to a meaningful life. Guards in Halden prison are unarmed and training courses, therapy and recreation are readily available. These and other design features of the Halton prison contribute to the low rate of reoffending. This works because people get treatment and rehabilitation rather than leaving in worse shape than when they arrive. We've looked at many effective alternatives to prison. They offer ways to respond to harmful behavior without focusing on punishment and the removal of people from society. These approaches address the causes of crime and the conditions that lead people to criminalized behavior. Rather than locking people away, we would focus on accountability and the reasons and circumstances surrounding the individual. Punishment is easy, but it doesn't result in accountability. Accountability requires that responsibilities between people or groups are addressed and the needs of all involved parties are met. Focusing on accountability and the broader reasons for crime means safer communities in the short and long term. It means more opportunities for healing and change for both people who have committed harm and those who have been harmed by crime. To get there, we must imagine a future without prisons. We can have justice systems that don't cause further harm after a crime has happened, but instead promote dignity, respect, and hope. We already know how to do it.